Hi, I'm Noisy Andrew, and today I'm going to explain why you should go and get a free ride in a large truck. Why would you want to do that? Well, they're incredibly cool bits of machinery. Also, as a taxpayer, you chip in quite a bit for what they do. So, as a proxy investor sort of thing, you deserve the occasional free ride, don't you? I'll also start this video with a disclaimer that I like trains. But you're not getting a free ride on any of them because by comparison, you chip in bugger all money to their existence. Over the past few months, we've been reading Malcolm Searle's book, My Railway Love Affair. In it, Malcolm writes about his many country postings as station master and railway administrator on the West Australian Government Railways. He mentions many places we'd never heard of, spots on the map that are now gone. We thought it would be a cool road trip to see if we could find some of these places. This led to a conversation with a small business owner in Querriting about this length of road. You see, Querriting is a town about 180 kilometres west of Perth and its railway was closed 10 years ago. Its grain bins can hold about a quarter of a million tonnes, so now all that grain needs to be trucked to the railhead somewhere else. That would be this road. And this little country council is expected to pay for this road's upkeep. Big deal, Noisy Andrew, I hear you say. How much can a road possibly cost? Well, let's look into that. In Western Australia, we have a lot, a lot of road freight that travels north along the Great Northern Highway. Once all this rolled through a tourist and wine area called the Swan Valley, hardly ideal. So a bypass road was built and this was completed in 2020. Recent enough to say that it uses the latest road building engineering principles. The cost of this project was a whisker over a billion dollars. And this is because it's engineered to handle road trains. Evidently, we call them B-doubles, as our esteemed leaders at the time thought the term road trains would cause other road users, other road users to feel nervous. Obviously, heavy trucks wear out the road surface much more quickly than light vehicles do. But what is the actual difference? Well, back in the 1950s, the American Association of State Highway Officials built a test road and drove up and down on it for years to work this out. It showed that wear to a road surface is a fourth order equation. You work this out by dividing the weight of the bigger vehicle by the weight of the smaller vehicle and multiplying that number by itself four times. Now this was a while ago and road building technology has improved, but in general, the principle still remains and this is why Northlink WA was a $1 billion project. Many years ago, when I was still bouncy and agile enough to play rugby, I worked at one of our local universities in its civil engineering department. I designed and programmed data logging systems for postgraduate students. So while my engineering qualification is not civil, I am a curious bloke who asks questions and it's during this time that I had one of the professors mention this fourth order function. In this conversation, he also mentioned it's not just the compressive load a wheel applies to the road surface that destroys it, it's also the shear load the driving wheels on a prime mover exert. So while you can mitigate the extra weight of trailers by adding more axles and therefore wheels, you still have to move the bloody thing and that is usually only done by two axles on the prime mover. You're dragging 60 or 70 tons with a contact patch of about half a square meter. That's pretty severe. Again, why that bypass road cost about a billion dollars. Now, given the road that will transfer the bulk of Querriting's grain is about the same length as our $1 billion road, you'd think the councils where this road is would be given about $1 billion. Well, no. That's not really fair. Our billion dollar road is dual carriageway and has a handful of fancy bridges and interchanges. So let's halve that. Maybe make it a bit more fair. Maybe they deserve 350 million. That sounds about right, doesn't it? So you may be asking, was the railway really so expensive that you need to close it to upgrade the road to B double standard? 
To be fair, it was in a sorry state. In our country drive, I took this picture and it looks like this bit of rail was rolled in the late 1800s. The track bed was very old and needed maintenance. I was told some areas the trains were limited to under 10 kilometres an hour and I'll bet you that fully loaded wagons were also not a thing. Railways have a thing called axle loading which depends on how thick the rails are and how well the bed sits in the ground. Big heavy rails laid on concrete sleepers in stone ballast is going to give a higher axle loading than circa 1980s rail plonked on some gravel. Actually, there were hundreds of kilometres of track like this in the West Australian wheat belt and the Conservative state government at the time thought sorting all this out was just too hard. But as it turns out, the current state government commissioned a report into reopening and upgrading all those lines. I'll link it below and you can go and read it. But in short, reopening Querding's railway line would cost about $60 million if you're going to do it cheap ass Tuesday style, or about $100 million if you'd like to run trains fully loaded at reasonable speeds. If you're curious about how much the basic bits of railway cost, here's a table from the Agonis report. Obviously, this is only track bed items, bridges, grade crossings, point work are extra and will cost a bit more, but I'm surprised to see that concrete sleepers are way more cost effective than I imagined. Although I think these concrete sleepers are not as thick as the ones that you'd use on a 130 km an hour track bed like for our metro service. Another point of interest is that the Agonis report claims it would be good for at least 30 years, which I think sounds pretty good. Let's compare that to a road that's 15 years old. The Forest Highway runs 95 kilometres from Perth south to Bunbury, one of Western Australia's other major cities. It was opened in 2009 and if you go to the Main Roads Department webpage and do a search, you can see all the modifications and maintenance that's happening on this highway. This is because humans in cars and trucks are unpredictable. Experience shows us it's very hard to know just how a new bit of public infrastructure will be used and expensive adjustments constantly needed to be made. A railway, on the other hand, is a much more predictable thing. Other than random acts of nature, which will hammer your roads too, uh, a railway will always do X if you provide Y. So how much money should Querdin Council have got to replace their railway with a safe, effective bulk haulage road? Let's look at the cost per single lane kilometre of the recent Northlink WA road we talked about at the beginning. If we allow for some interchanges, slip roads and merge lanes, we can assume there's about 200 kilometres of vehicle lane in the Northlink Highway. If we divide that by its cost of 1 billion, we end up with a cost of about 5 million per kilometre of road. Obviously you can build roads cheaper than this, but don't go driving anything bigger than a heavy rigid truck on it if you want it to last more than a few years. Though there's another thing we should probably consider, and that is that Querid in Cunderdon Road will probably have much less heavy traffic vehicle trips on it than our Northlink route. So maybe assuming that it needs the same level of engineering is unfair. Let's look at that. Remember we saw the Querdin grain bin could hold a maximum of 250,000 tonnes. The tear of a random B double is in the order of about 25 tonnes. This leaves about 35 tonnes for cargo. That's over 7,000 trips on that road. 40 trips a day as those trucks have to return also. This does not include farmers delivering that grain to the querying bin or transfer of different types of grain back and forth between other bins to keep things organised. While I was chatting to friendly querying small businessman, he mentioned that he'd been told also that when trucks return empty, their bouncing wheels also do a lot of damage to the road. But I haven't heard this from an expert, it's second hand, but that's also something worth considering. This also left me curious about how many heavy vehicles use the Northlink route. Main Roads WA actually makes these numbers publicly available. From this, you can see that about 3,000 heavy vehicles use this route a day. Bear in mind that they classify anything bigger than a delivery van or a light truck as a heavy vehicle. So some of those are road trains, oh, I'm sorry, B-doubles, uh, uh, but others will just be heavy rigid trucks, delivery vans and buses. So 
It looks like our transfer road has about 1 to 2% of the traffic that the North Link has. I think that's still a fairly significant given it's only a single carriageway road in the country. But anyway, that roughs out to an amount of about 50 million given to each of the councils to get that road up to heavy haulage scratch. After a bit of research and some question asking, I got this. Two years after the line was closed, the Quarrington Council was grounded only a fraction of that money. So local ratepayers will need to either come up with the rest or hassle the state or federal government for more money if they do not want their road to risk becoming a holy death trap. Anyway, if these trucks are cutting up the road so badly, they are obviously paying a premium to cover that, right? Well, let's have a look at that too. On the Department of Transport website, you can look up registration fees for various types of vehicles. Assuming I understand this correctly, that will cost you about $10,000 for your prime mover and one to $2,000 for each of your trailers. While doing my research for this, I came across this on the Outback Travel Australia website. I'll link it below. They explain the fourth order road wear equation and state that if standard family car costs $500 per year to register, a regular b double should be paying over $4 million. This is clearly ludicrous, but it does illustrate the extent to how out of balance bulk freight haulage is in Western Australia. Taxpayers clearly subsidise heavy road haulage massively. So why is subsidising railways similarly such a dirty thing? I feel this problem started back in the year 2000 on December 17th when our Conservative state government leased out the regional rail network for a song for 50 years. Since then, much of the thing has basically been pruned and run into the ground. The network is notionally there for all folk to run trains on, but meeting all the requirements and costs to the lessee is a bit like jumping backwards through a hoop blindfolded with your ass on fire. There's probably another video in that story, but let's move on. So why should you care about this? Well, we're part of an expanding global economy, meaning we have to compete with other nations and state in export markets. So efficiency is important, and I don't think expecting taxpayers to make up for inefficient slack is the answer. If you live in any of these central wheat belt or great southern shires, you should be jumping up and down. As the UK has found out, and as Germany is painfully finding out, not every bloody thing needs to be privatised. Transport infrastructure in particular. Look at Sydney's toll system. A state government throwing taxpayer money at a corporation to keep a previously privatised system viable is just tragically laughable. On top of all of this, renationalising privatised infrastructure is messy and expensive. Those corporations are not going to give back those toys you gave them without some tears and tantrums. This is a lesson on be careful what you wish for. Things change and we should take the time to notice. The Greens are no longer a party who only care about trees. The Labor Party doesn't give a shit about workers or unions anymore. And Conservatives are not the handy fiscal overlords we once thought they were. Like I said, maybe I'll do a video on the privatisation of WA's regional rail network. Until then, thanks for making it to the end with me. Maybe like, comment or subscribe. And while I still have your attention, I have another channel where I talk about board games and adjacent fun stuff. Game theory is where I get my interest in juggling numbers. Maybe go there and check that out too.